As it appears the season one finale of Hell of a Boss won't be arriving until next year, Vivzy Pop has decided to bless us with a peek into the future beyond that long-awaited finale, with a season two preview mostly consisting of animatics. These animatic scenes feature what appears to be Blitz's past, alongside the return of Striker, Fitzeroli, Asmodeus, and so much freaking more. So much information is hidden right in plain sight. And as always, we're going to run through this trailer for all the details you may have missed. With all that said, let's dive in. So this trailer appears to consist of footage from three or four upcoming episodes featured in the second season, a Luna and Blitz bonding episode, Blitz's origin story, a rematch of Striker, and an episode exploring the societal consequences of Fitzeroli and Asmodeus' relationship, already exploring the parallels between these two and the other match made in hell that was recently clowned on. Most of these premises seem to serve a similar purpose, giving us greater insight into these characters, with a majority of this teaser seemingly consisting of flashbacks. We open on what I assume is the season premiere, given the finished animation, where Blitz seems flustered and ready to return home, which initially seems to be a decision prompted by Luna, but she changes her tune once a fellow hellhound begins to flirt with her. Coupled with Luna's line, these people seem to know you, which I think is being spoken in a more figurative sense, as in, these people really get Blitz in his personality, it seems as if Blitz wants to get Luna in touch with her roots, finally following up on the details of her adoption that was revealed back in Spring Broken. Because I adopted! you and that should mean something oh what does it matter you're not my real dad i was almost 18. it still counts although luna was almost 18 when blitz adopted her we still know next to nothing about her upbringing or how blitz even crossed paths with her in the first place the idea of revisiting such a thing is probably why luna would be difficult with her adopted father in the first place so when they initially attend wherever they're at luna may slowly warm up to the environment as she begins to see a different side of blitz alongside hitting it off of a hellhound or two and it's ultimately this beefcake that seals the deal on the two staying a bit longer. I'm also assuming Blitz saying, maybe one drink, is gonna be followed up with a smash cut of him absolutely hammered and having a great time. Just sounds like the kind of gag Hell of a Boss would go for. I'm definitely hoping this episode provides more Luna backstory to the audience, as an episode focusing on her at all has been long overdue. We cut to Solus sitting alone in a dark room, with the clock ticking behind him, as the prince clutches onto his top hat. If this is set in the present, this is probably following up whatever developments occur in the season 1 finale. Perhaps he's awaiting to finalize his divorce of Stella, needing to sign the papers. But he starts to have cold feet now that his future of Blitz is uncertain. If it's set in the past, this could be highlighting how lonely Stolas felt before starting his fling with Blitz, giving us a deeper look than ever before into Stolas' personal life and all the ways this lowly imp brought joy to it. However, there may be another meaning to these shots should this take place in the present day, which ties into the very next thing we see. There's a quick flash of Luna in her human disguise, looking at her phone and doing a spit take, as if whatever she's reading is shocking beyond belief. I assume this is directly after the identical shot of her walking out of the coffee shop in the first place, and the inclusion of the disguise likely means she's on Earth. And if her phone picks up on Earth service when in the world of the living, she may be reading a jaw-dropping headline that calls back to the episode Truth Seekers, an adventure that concluded with Agents 1 and 2 of Dorks recovering footage of Imp and Stolas going on a murder spree throughout the headquarters. Now, that evidence may have gone viral among human society, released to the public, informing Luna that war is coming one sparked by Blitz. Not just for his incompetence getting them captured, but from him stealing the grimoire in the first place. And that's how this could tie into this shot of Stolas and even the focus of his top hat. The bill always comes due, and now he has to face the consequences of enabling Imp's affairs on Earth for so long. We cut to Blitz trying to get freaky with Stolas by attempting to get in between his legs, but a blushing Stolas is quick to move out of the way. The red arrow but Blitz, of course used to indicate movement in storyboards, makes it seem like he dies into the couch and not just being thrown off balance as if Blitz was trying to grab something. You know, aside from Solus's dick. Assuming this is part of the series of flashbacks, he could be trying to get his hands on the grimoire or a key that he can use to enter a separate room and then steal the book, trying to seduce Stolas after recognizing how miserable his home life is. The seduction, of course, would begin to spark actual feelings on Stolas' side of things, which would eventually be reciprocated by Blitz. But we know how much of a mess that is at the moment. Should this be set in the present day, after season one? Perhaps Blitz is more in tune with his feelings, adamant to make things work with Stolas, only for their roles to be flipped. 
as now Stolas is the one shutting down the advances and trying to keep his distance for one reason or another. We have Moxie and another imp who at first I thought was Striker robbing a wealthy location. Moxie has the one holding the bag of cash, so if they were caught, he'd probably receive a greater punishment than whoever this chump is. Actually, we later see this guy show up at Moxie's door holding a sign that says, tell your dad I'm a salesman, so he's definitely some sort of con artist, which means yeah, he's likely trying to incriminate Moxie. I'm not sure what to make of this, but if we're diving to everyone else's past, this could be a look into Moxie's life before him, maybe even the day he met Millie. After all, how did a sweet goofball like him get into murdering? I know, I know, they're in hell, but that doesn't answer the question! We have Blitz in a human household as his face hilariously contorts as if he's nervous, with a shitty wig on his head. Couple this with other shots of Blitz in the same outfit, being pushed into a dark room by what looks to be an assistant or producer, caught up in a bra while holding a puppy, and most telling of all, hit with a face full of makeup on what appears to be a Hollywood backstage, given the star on the door, I think this is all a part of Blitz's origin story, showcasing his first time on Earth. We know Blitz already has a failed career as a performer at Lululand, so it's looking like, in between that stint and forming Imp, he tried to masquerade as a human on Earth to pursue an acting career in Hollywood, which led to this big confrontation where I assume they discovered he was actually a demon, resulting in Blitz realizing, you know what, I think killing people is my true calling. His face contorting may be when he realizes the other suspicions towards his identity, and it just spirals out of control from there. And yeah, after he returns to hell, he's eager to find another gateway to Earth, which leads him to Stolz's doorstep. There's also the possibility that due to tensions in the workplace, Season 1 concludes with Blitz quitting Imp, and this Hollywood adventure, and subsequent massacre, takes place in the present day as he tries a new career path. Still following Blitz's past, we have a shot of him and Fitzeroli in their youth, traveling down a hallway. This is eyes full of wonder and opportunity, whereas Blitz seems to be filled with doubt and hesitation. Whatever conversation they're having could revolve around the reality that M's are oppressed in hell, and the idea of making something out of themselves is near impossible, sowing the seeds for the inevitable collapse of the relationship and Blitz's ambitions driving him to become greater than he currently is. Stolas and Blitz are seen making googly eyes in the prince's bed, or at least Stolas's, as Blitz is spotted eyeing the grimoire, again tying into Blitz's origin story, needing to core Stolas out of it, tying back in a scene from the pilot where Blitz is shown stealing the book, perhaps they're now reworking it into complete canonicity. And should this be in present day, Blitz may be hatching a scheme that results in that Hollywood fiasco. Again, maybe he leaves Imp and now he's trying to prove to his former colleagues and himself that he doesn't need Imp to be successful. Stella is seen confronting Stolas, and flashback or not, I'm sure she's reaffirming how bad it would be for the family's reputation for Stolas to be caught red-handed getting jiggy with an Imp and the consequences of abusing the book. But if this is set in present day, it implies both of them and Stryker survive the events of season one. I theorized before that Solas may die, likely in the season 1 finale, but that's a theory that I now retract, considering I wasn't keeping in mind the barrier gaze trope and how Fizzy Pop would likely try to avoid that. But Stella and Striker's lives could still be on the table, just not by the end of the first season. Ozzy and Fizz are caught red-handed, seen getting all cuddly by a fellow employee of Ozzy's, in what I assume to be the break room. And later in the trailer, we see Fizz is handed a Lustring newspaper with a headline that reads, King of Oz, a hypocrite? Meaning this affair does get exposed to the masses. And people want answers. After we just witnessed a grand musical number slamming Stolas and Blitz for a pretty identical relationship. I'm not sure where the story could lead, aside from some further development on these characters, and maybe Fitz trying to reconcile with Blitz in order to receive some help. Maybe he wants him to find the source of whoever leaked the information and kill them. But whatever it may be, I'm very excited to get more of these two. We have what's already a beautifully composed scene of Blitz and Fizz dancing, perhaps during a musical number. Fizz seducing Blitz before dropping him and stealing his keys. Regardless of what these keys are for, or if he's just teasing him for the keychain, I think this could have been a pivotal moment in Blitz and Fizz Raleigh's falling out, showing us why Blitz is so bitter towards him in the present day. Speaking of musical numbers, it seems like we're getting another sexy one with Fizz and Ozzy, as Fizz is twirling around fire, handed by Ozzy, and playing with a match. And it just looks too good to not be a song. I can't wait, I'm still humming the last one every day. Striker's back and he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Millie and Moxie somewhere underground, as the villain uses his whip to break off a piece of stalactite from the top of a cave and whip it at them as a projectile. He also breaks out his dual pistols, and it looks like he kind of struggles to hold his own against the power couple. This time around, Striker isn't coming for Blitz or Stolas, but Moxie and Millie. Which makes sense, given his animosity towards Moxie in the Harvest Moon Festival, and Moxie interrupting the partnership being formed between Striker and Blitz. So now Striker knows if he gets these two out of the picture, he has a better chance of coursing Blitz to his side. 
And to round things out, we have a few miscellaneous shots. An adolescent blitz on a farm, looking at something or someone. I'm assuming this is the moment he met Fizz. Fizz arriving to an event in penis pumping style. A crowd going wild at what might be a Marasica appearance, if not just Fizzerali. Octavia tearing up a brochure, showing she likely still holds resentment towards her dad in Blitz, further fleeing ruining the family. We see a character who appears to be a member of Solus and Stella's species, coming across as royalty, Millie beating the shit out of someone, I can't wait to see that animated, and we end on Fizz's hand, seemingly hooked up to something, dramatically moving away as Rose Petals fall. This is likely him recovering from whatever led to his cybernetic enhancements. The true end of his relationship with Blitz. And with that, the trailer and our breakdown comes to a close. I can't wait for season 2, it looks like we're getting tons of character development and their backstories, something that can make or break a series, and as hilarious as this show can get, I'm glad we're digging deeper into the emotional core of it all. 2022 is gonna be great. But as always, what do you guys think? What are your predictions? What are some details I may have missed? Let us know in the comments down below, or keep the conversation going over at Roundable Vids and at Audric Vox on both Twitter and Instagram. Special thanks to Jakey Bones for creating an awesome thumbnail, although when this video goes up, it'll probably be a temporary thumbnail so they have more time to work on it. You can't rush perfection, but still. Be sure to give them a follow at Twitter and Instagram at BoneJakey, and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Links down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!